What's up, Patreon? Uh, this is Jeff with Godbolt Exotics. If you're watching this right now, it is because you guys are Patreon uh, followers, meaning you've pledged to the Patreon page. And I just want to start out by saying thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate the faith you guys have had in donating to the channel. It is the reason that uh, the channel is around. It's because of you guys that I'm gonna be able to offer more content from different collections and that I'm gonna be, be able to really expand the channel to the places that I really wanna go and to the extent that I really want. So just wanna start out by saying thank you. I really, really appreciate it. I wanted to do something with you guys. I try and set this up real quick. I want to offer some more exclusive content uh, for just Patreon followers. These are things that I want to do just for Patreon. This isn't going to ever hit YouTube. This isn't going to hit, you know, Facebook or anything like that. This is stuff that's just for the Patreon followers. I have a project, just making sure they're not moving around, that I haven't really talked much about. I've done a few little snippets here and there. It is my Brazilian rainbow boas. I've got some really nice animals. Right now I just have two pairs, but I wanted to take a few of them out and I actually wanted to talk to you guys about Brazilian rainbow boas. One thing I'll start out by saying is that they are probably one of the most beautiful boa species out there, in my opinion. You guys know I love Corallus and you know I love all the uh, tree boas. But Brazilian rainbow boas are extremely beautiful. Not only do they have several different colors all across the palette, just in their normal phenotype, but whenever you take them out in the sun and the actual sun hits them, you can see an iridescence that you don't see in too many different snake species. So I wanted to bring a couple out. This is right before the sun goes down, so the lighting is absolutely perfect. The temperatures are really nice. We're sitting in like low to mid 70s. One thing about Brazilian rainbow boas I wanted to say is, you know, they're really, really easy to keep as long as you know what you're working with. And I think water is probably the keynote here. Let me grab one. Let's talk about them for a minute. I'm gonna try and position this to where it's down so that you guys aren't necessarily looking at me as much as you are looking at the actual animal. So hold on one sec. So this is Amber. She was produced by Ike Leitner and she's not very old. She is just a killer animal. Let me see if I can get this to where you guys can see this a little bit better. But she is just an awesome, awesome animal. Very, very cool. And um, let me see if I can get her, you know, see if I can get the focus in real quick. I'm gonna try and position this so that you guys get good lighting here. But these guys, they're, as you can see, super docile. They don't bite a lot. And the iridescence that you see is really, you see it along the dorsal pattern, along the sides. As the sun hits, these guys, you know, actually it, it's like a shimmer. They're born very, very orange. Like this, this color here is, is very orange. As they mature, it actually starts to develop into more of a red color. Let's see if I can get him to actually, or her, excuse me. <laughs> see if I can get her to actually lengthen out a little bit. Uh, maybe I can put her down here and you guys can see her a little bit stretched out. But I apologize for the wiggle here. I'm just trying to make this as easy for you guys to follow as possible. But uh, let's see. Very, very cool um, species. They're actually one of my favorite species. I have worked with a lot of stuff over the years and Brazilian rainbow boas are actually one of my favorites. These guys don't require a lot. They do require consistent, clean water. So if you're gonna keep Brazilian rainbow boas, don't offer them a minimum, like a, a small water dish. Give them something that's large enough for them to soak in because they will use it. And make sure that there's a humid hide. So for me, I like to use these right here. So you can tell one side is dry and one side is very moist. So I don't necessarily need a moist hide, but 
I think that for folks that don't like to use substrate, you know, it's really important to give them a moist hide. For me, I don't use the, the I don't use um, hide boxes and moist hides because I have the substrate that I, that kind of like, you know, serves that. Anyway, this is Amber. She's only a little over a year old. She's a really cool animal. I'm trying to get the, the lighting here. Okay, this is much, much better. So now you guys can really see the color on her. I mean, she is so bright. Now this animal here comes from Salted and Lucille from, from uh, Ike Leitner. And that is a selectively bred line of, I mean, this, this pairing is gonna produce a lot of really high red. So these oranges are gonna turn red as she matures. Really, really stoked about her. Now I'm gonna pull out a male that was produced by a local buddy of mine. He comes from an East Bay Vivarium uh, line bred to a Dave Coling animal. Let's get him out real quick, but yeah, Amber, she's awesome. Put this down. I apologize for the spinning around. I'm just trying to make sure that the lighting is good enough for you guys that you can actually see the animals and see their colors. So this, this is Marley. Um, I've posted a couple pictures of him, but he was produced by, whoops, by my good friend. He's getting a little squirmy. I apologize, guys. <laughs> getting a little squirmy on me, but he was produced by my good friend, uh, Glenn Brooks, here locally. And they're kind of, it's, you know, they're starting to come out right now and get alert. So it's kind of hard, but they're active, but they're not uh, necessarily defensive animal. Now there's exceptions to every rule here. These guys are just very, very cool. Let me see if I can get it to chill on me. Let me put this guy down. Maybe I, maybe that's the b best thing to do. Oh, and I got one trying to escape right here. <laughs> Amber's trying to get away from me. But yeah, Marley's a really cool animal. Um, I don't feed my males too much. I have a, a female that's the same age as him and she's twice the size. Anyway, this is just a short little bonus video. Um, I apologize for it being a little bit difficult for you guys to watch, but um, you know, I'm doing my best to try and keep these guys from running away and getting some good colors for you guys. There you go. These guys like to burrow in the mulch. They like to, uh, typically that are here in this area, that's the moist part. Uh, pretty much every one of mine likes to stay over here and then they, they come over to the dry side, which is where the heat is, whenever they need to bask, whenever they're digesting a meal. Those are some Brazilian rainbow boas. They don't get too large. You wouldn't need anything larger than a, f a four foot cage or, you know, males can easily be kept in a CB, uh, CB70 tub. They like temperatures a little bit cooler, so you don't really need anything over 85 degrees. Rarely will they bask at temperatures higher than that. And you, like I said before, it's only when they're trying to digest a meal. So this is a project that's here to stay at Godbold Exotics. I'm definitely planning on branching into the hypos. I really want to get into some other lines and they're probably one of my favorite species of boas. And I know there's a lot of people that have them. They've been around forever, but I just think that they're just absolutely awesome. And one thing I think that makes them somewhat rare is if you look for the right animals, not the mediocre ones, but the ones that have been selectively bred. I'm just checking to make sure they're not moving away out of their tubs. So if you check for the ones that have been selectively bred, those are the ones that are somewhat rare. Now these may just look like typical Brazilian rainbows at this point, but as they start to mature because of their parents, you'll see that they're actually above average. They, they will, I think they're gonna turn into above average animals because their parents are all above average. So I, I've seen them 
compare to other babies at this age and they're much brighter. So the brighter orange translates to a more red or a more vibrant animal as an adult. That's Brazilian rainbow boas. I hope you like it. It's one of those projects that I'm just super, super stoked about. I'm hoping you guys really like it. If you have anyone that's, you know, liking the channel, they'd like to get involved and support, you know, pass the word along. I really appreciate everybody that's pledged. We're here to stay. So you're going to be seeing a lot more and every once in a while i'm going to try and give you guys some exclusive content that's just for patreon followers because that's my way of giving back and saying thank you so until next time guys you've been watching god bold exotics thanks for supporting us on patreon peace take care and you guys uh branch out and get yourself some brazilian rainbows if you uh if you're interested all right bye bye